All right, in this screencast, we're going to learn some properties of parallel lines with transversals. And uh, to get started, we're going to go to GeoGebra. So I need you to click on this link and go to GeoGebra.org slash geometry. And here we are. I don't need to have any axes, so I'm going to uncheck the show axes and uncheck the show grid, and I want no grid. Okay, I click that little gear to get the settings there. All right and we're going to create a line AB. It's going to click and click again. I'm going to create a point that's not on line AB so I'm going to click right there and then I'm going to create a line that's parallel to AB going to that point. So I'm going to do my more and I'm going to go down to parallel line. Remember you can pause if I get ahead of you here. Pause and stop to catch up. Okay so I'm going to click on that parallel line and it says select the point in the parallel line. So I'm going to select point C and select that line. And then if I go back to my move tool up here, when I grab point B, notice those lines stay parallel. Okay, now let's put another line, a transversal, through B and C. So I'm going to click on B, click on C, and now I have a transversal. All right. Our next steps are to put some points on here so we can measure the angle. So I'm going to put a point D. Whoop. Okay, I'm just going to control Z to undo that. I, need to, I want to get my point tool. There we go. So D, E, F, G, and H. Okay, and if your points are in exactly the same order, that's fine. Okay, now I want to measure corresponding angles. Okay, so let's measure angle DBH. So I'm going to go to down here to measure angle, and I'm going to go DBH, and it says it's 57.6, and the corresponding angle to DBH is FC. B. So I'm going to click F, C, B, and I get 57.6. Now, the order that I click the points is important. Watch what happens if I did B, C, F. Well, okay, it did work that way. Never mind. Okay, go back to your move tool, and let's move that out there. And since I measured that twice, I'm just going to trash that measurement right there. Okay, there we go. All right, and if I grab point D out here, nope, let's grab point B. Notice that the lines stay parallel, but the corresponding angles are congruent. And that's actually going to be true for all the corresponding angles. Okay, so that brings up our first postulate. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. So let's draw a picture that illustrates that. So here's my parallel line, and we're going to get a new symbol here. If I put a little red arrow on each of those lines, that means those lines are parallel. That's what the little red arrows mean. Okay, now here is my transversal, and I've got angle one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And by this postulate, which remember we don't prove postulates, by this postulate, angle one is congruent to angle five, top left angle on there up there and top left angle down there. Angle two is congruent to angle six. Angle four is congruent to angle eight and angle three is congruent to angle seven. So this is a very important postulate. If you have two parallel lines cut by transversal, then the corresponding angles are always congruent. Okay, so our next one is a theorem, which means we're going to prove it. And it says that if two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, so what that means is, 
that if line L is parallel to line M, then I need to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Alternate interior angles are in between the two lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. Okay, I'm going to start with my given line L is parallel to line M. And then by the posture that we just learned, angle 3 is congruent to angle 2 because they're corresponding, remember? corresponding angles are congruent and angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 because they're vertical so vertical angles are congruent and that means that if angle 3 is congruent to angle 2 and angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 then angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 by substitution. So that's just a little four-step proof. Our next theorem involves same side interior angles. Remember that those angles are on the inside in between the two lines and they are on the same side of the transversal. And we're not going to prove they're congruent, we're going to prove they're supplementary. So here we go. If two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then same side interior angles are supplementary. We're given that line L is parallel to line M. So that's going to be my first step. Line L parallel to line M. Our reason is that that's given. And I'm going to say that the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 1 is 180. And that is angle addition postulate and I'm also going to say that measure of angle 3 plus measure of angle 4 is 180 for the same reason angle addition postulate and then I'm going to say that the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 4 because nope sorry measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3 because corresponding angles are congruent. So then by substitution, I can replace this angle 3. Wait a minute, hang on a second. I can replace this angle 1 right here with this angle 3. And notice that that is what we're trying to prove. So my last step measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3 is 180 by substitution. In other words, if angle 2 plus angle 3 add up to 180, then they're supplementary. Okay, and our last theorem in this section says that if a transversal is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it is perpendicular to the other. So if I can prove that angle 1 is 90, then that means that the transversal is also perpendicular to, to uh, line M. Okay, well that's not too hard. I'm not even going to write it out actually. What do we know about this angle right here and this angle right here? Well, they're corresponding angles, right? And since L and M are parallel, that means corresponding angles are congruent, which means that the measure of angle 1 has to also be 90. So that was an easy one. All right, let's look at some examples. If A is parallel to B, so if this angle here is parallel to that one, name all the angles that must be congruent to angle 1. So here's the trick to doing this, guys. Only look at the lines and transversals involved in angle 1. So that is line A, that's the transversal C, and line B. I'm going to ignore all of this because they have nothing to do with angle 1. Okay, so here's angle 1. This is our congruent angle. Well, obviously, angle 6 is congruent because it's vertical. Angle 3 is congruent because it's corresponding. Angle 8 is congruent because it's vertical to angle 3. And angle Let's see, 6, 3, and 8, I think that's it. Those are the only ones that are congruent to angle 1. Okay, let's look at the next one. I'm going to erase everything I just did. And this time, 
line C is parallel to line D. So now here's, and we, we're looking at angle one again. So here's my transversal line A, line C, and line D, which means I'm going to ignore all of these angles. Okay, so what's congruent to angle one? Once again, angle six is congruent because it is vertical. Angle nine is congruent because it's corresponding. Angle 14 is congruent because it's vertical to angle 9. And I believe that's all we have. Angle 1 is congruent to 6, 9, and 14. Okay, how about this one? We're going to solve for x and y. Notice that we have the two little red arrows here, which means that this top piece is parallel to this bottom piece. Okay, well, what do we know about this angle and that angle? They are same side interior, which means they have to add up to 180. So I get 18x equals 180, so x is 10. Notice that this angle is same side interior to this angle, so they have to add up to 180. So 2y plus 90 equals 180, 2y is 90 y is 45. We could also say that since the transversal is perpendicular to one parallel line, it has to be perpendicular to the other parallel line. So two ways to do that problem. And the last example here, okay, I've got a transversal right here perpendicular to this line and that line is parallel to this line, which means that 3x has to be 90 so x equals 30. All right, now let's switch our perspective. And now I've got this transversal right here, and it is working with these two parallel lines. This is corresponding to that. So that means that 68 is equal to 8y plus 4. 64 is equal to 8y, so y is equal to 8. All right, and then finally, this must be 90. Okay, so if this is 64, then this has to be 26, so we get a total of 90 degrees, which means that 2z equals 26, so z equals 13.